Reagan is my name and Dylan, my spouse, was once a junior at my business. While Dylan may be untrustworthy, he was honest and nice, so as the person in charge of teaching him, I happily taught him his work. He was nervous about his work at first, but as time passed, he became more comfortable around me. Reagan, are you available this weekend? When he asked me out on a date, I was astonished, but I noticed a manliness in his face that was different from what he showed at work, which made my heart race. Since then, he and I have regularly gone out together. Reagan, will you become my girlfriend? By the time we were six months into our relationship, he was totally capable of handling his own job. Dylan has undoubtedly become a tremendous asset to our firm. When others in the workplace commended him, it made me happy as if it were my own accomplishment. After that, he was promoted and transferred to a new department, which prompted him to propose to me. Reagan, I want to marry you. Yes, I would love to. Dylan immediately won over my parents and sister Zoe, and our marriage went off without a hitch. Zoe, who is Dylan's age, took to him right away. I wish I could marry someone as kind as Dylan. Despite his appearance, he's highly regarded at work, correct? Zoe, who had recently broken up with her boyfriend, appeared to be wishing for marriage and envious of me. After getting married, I continued to work while doing housekeeping, helping Dylan both at work and at home by providing him with job advice. Perhaps I was the only one who thought I was doing a good job of supporting him. A year after we married, he started arriving home late and increasingly later, and we rarely had dinner together. Hey Dylan, you haven't talked much about work lately. Is everything oak? It is nothing. But you always come home late. If there is any issue, I would like to assist in any way I can. As I previously stated, there is nothing incorrect. Is this so? Although he used to discuss everything with me, he now looks annoyed when I bring up work. On his days off, he either sleeps all day because he says he's weary or he goes out on a whim, claiming he needs time to himself. Realizing we hadn't spent any time together, I made a suggestion to him. Hey Dylan, how about we travel to a resort hotel together next month for a three-day weekend? My sister recommended a good place. A resort hotel would be ideal for relieving our work-related stress. I made the arrangements, such as booking the hotel during work breaks on his behalf, as he was too busy, or carried out the preparations. Dylan, one week before the trip, what time should we leave the house next week? Is there a resort excursion next week? I failed to mention that I have work travel on the three-day weekend next week. What? But I informed you about it long ago. It is work. It can't be helped. I see. Dylan's apartment appears to be as busy as normal, and he frequently travels for business, so it appears that there was no alternative but to give up this time. Okay, I'm off. As usual, he left early in the morning for his work trip. If everything had gone according to plan, we would be on our way to the resort right now. While I was still down, I received a phone call. The call came from the hotel I had booked. They had called to check our estimated arrival time as the cancellation email I thought I had sent had apparently not been received. That's it. I might as well invite Zoe because it's already planned. I contacted my parents' place, but Zoe had left in the morning and was not coming back that day. Instead of Zoe, I invited my mother to the resort on a whim. My mother, unlike my outgoing sister, would be unable to go out on such short notice, so I had almost given up but to my surprise, she accepted. Really? Is it all right to leave dad alone? Right now, I am more concerned about you than your father. Apparently, she had noticed my recent lack of energy and wanted to accompany me on the trip. Mom, thank you, Reagan. I am overjoyed that we have this unexpected opportunity to travel together. We headed out determined to make the most of our unusual journey together. However, something unexpected happened at our destination. Mom, take a look at it. We ran into Dylan, who was meant to be on a business trip on the beach at our destination, and he was arm in arm with a woman, appearing happy as they entered the hotel where we were meant to stay. As we entered the hotel, the woman with Dylan sent a glance our way. This cannot be. Dylan was accompanied by my younger sister, Zoe. I was astonished to see this. I couldn't recall how I got back home. After drinking the tea my mother made for me, I began to relax. Dylan had lied to me. Not only had Dylan fooled me, but so had Zoe. After regaining my calm, I contacted Dylan's department. As I suspected, they informed me that Dylan's department had been reducing work for several years, and they had attempted not to allow him to perform much overtime, let alone business travel. When I told my mother about Dylan's late arrivals and previous work excursions, they closely matched the times that Zoe was not at home. So all this time, when he came home late or was away on business trips overnight, he was meeting Zoe. Knowing the reality, 
I felt wrath instead of sadness. Mom, I'm going to divorce Dylan and don't want to see Zoe's face, so I won't be coming home for a while. My mother listened quietly to what I had to say. I prepared continuously until Dylan and Zoe returned from their excursion. I went to town hall to acquire the divorce papers, signed a lease for a new place to live, packed my possessions, and drove to the weekly rental, where I would stay until I could move into my new place. I simply left a letter for Dylan and the divorce papers at our home. I stated in the letter that any alimony and other issues would be handled by a lawyer and barred all contact with Dylan. I did not notify my parents about my new address since I did not want Dylan or Zove to know. I absolutely disregarded Dylan, despite the fact that we worked for the same firm and occasionally crossed paths. Dylan quickly consented to the divorce, possibly understanding the situation was bleak for my demeanor. I didn't tell anyone at the company about the divorce, but it appeared that they felt something from my actions and refrained from inquiring. Three years have gone since I separated myself from Dylan and my parents' home. One day, when I was about to return to my apartment from work, I noticed my mother standing in front of me. Mother, what are you doing here? I have something to tell you. She showed me an invitation. This is from Dylan and Zoe. Apparently, Zoe moved out of our parents' house and into Dylan's. I anticipated they could remarry, but I didn't expect them to hold a wedding ceremony and invite our parents. So, Mom, are you going? I think. Of course I see. I was the only person who couldn't forgive them yet. Dylan and Zoe must have been thinking the same thing when they invited our parents to the ceremony. I had no right to say anything because I had been distant from both Dylan and my parents. She smiled slyly as she noticed my sadness. Don't worry, I don't intend to bless them. Simply wait and see. On the day of the wedding, she video called me. I don't want to see them. I was going to hang up the phone until I remembered my mother's remarks from before I left my phone screen on. They were just getting started with a slideshow on the screen, so they started introducing it. The bride's mother put together these slides by compiling pictures of her adored daughter from birth to the present. While I was astonished that my not-so-tech-savvy mother could construct such a slideshow, I became upset again. My mother? For Zoe? But in the next minute, I was glued to the TV. This was not Zoe. The presentation began with a photo of me at birth. How cute. She looks vaguely like Zoe, doesn't she? Zoe's face tightened as the guests looked on with warmth. The epi said, from a young age, our bride was family-oriented, worked hard during her student years, was accepted into her dream university, and even after employment, she was a woman who was heavily relied on at her company. Zoe's friends and coworkers who had known her from her college days began to mumble, isn't that the Harvard matriculation ceremony picture? Zoe didn't attend a particularly good school, did she? Hey, that company's orientation photo isn't ours, correct? If you look attentively, their faces are completely different. That is not Zoe, is it? Dylan appears to have finally noticed. What the heck is this? This isn't Zoe, and the heedless bride and groom proceeded to advance the slides. She then met Dylan at her company. According to her mother, the bride first served as the groom's mentor, training him. From there, the couple got married. What followed was a photograph of my wedding ceremony with Dylan. They couldn't conceal his confusion. When the puzzles grew silent, my mother entered the stage and took the microphone. I will take over from here and provide discussion on these slides. She seamlessly continued the conversation while moving the slides. My daughter continued to support Dylan in both his business and personal life after they married. However, Dylan's job schedule caused him to have less and less time for my daughter. My daughter booked a trip to a resort to help relieve her stress. Mother-in-law, please wait a minute. While Zoe paled and Dylan tried to stop her, my mother-in-law resumed the slideshow. The next image showed Dylan and Zoe enthusiastically entering a hotel at the resort. Finally, a portrait of the bride and groom showed up, and the guests became silent. Dylan and Zoe, on the other hand, only kept becoming paler. However, Dylan declined my daughter's resort trip, citing a business trip. My daughter was understanding, and she asked me about the resort trip instead. What we saw there was Dylan's infidelity. With my mother's words, the venue began to buzz anew. What about the infidelity scene? This is Zoe and Dylan, correct? Could this be a marital affair? But why is Zoe's mother doing this? To respond to the guest's inquiry, my mother slowly continued. Dylan, who was married to my beloved daughter Catherine, was meant to be her lifelong protector and happiness provider. But he betrayed her. He had an affair with Zoe, Catherine's younger sister. Mom, stop it. Today is my wedding day. Can't you just be happy for us and bestow your blessings? Zoe cried as she attempted to stop my mother. 
but my mother cast a stern glare at Zoe and murmured, I've always wished for your happiness. You were the one who damaged it first, but Reagan was always concerned with our family's happiness as much as her own. Zoe, how about you? Have you ever considered how much Reagan would suffer as a result of what you did? But it isn't fair. Reagan seemed to have a perfect life. So instead of celebrating your family's happiness, you would be jealous. Mother-in-law, please stop. Zoe is also your darling daughter, correct? So why can't you rejoice in our fresh beginning? Why are you doing this? I do not want to be a part of a family with someone as insincere as you. I noticed this after attending today's event. If you were really going to start again, Dylan, why didn't you invite anyone from your company? If you're going to hold a great ceremony like this, shouldn't you formally apologize to Reagan? You didn't even bother to do that, yet you had the arrogance to invite me and my husband here. This is intolerable, but Reagan has been ignoring me, which is understandable given what you did. But that's all in the past. Do you think Regan's wounds will heal in just three years, or that you can win our faith in only three years? Who are you taking us for? With that, my mother and father departed the venue. Suddenly, my mother's voice rang out from my phone. Reagan, did you watch? I apologize for bringing up sad memories, but I can't forgive these two for acting as if nothing occurred. No thanks. I feel relieved. It's as if you said everything I intended to say. That's correct. You always hold back. I thought it was very gentle of you not to inform your coworkers of the cause of your divorce. She then provided me with the recordings of our talk with Dylan at the wedding. Just as she suggested, I didn't stand up for myself because I thought time would cure my wounds, but I'm still upset and Dylan, the one who brought this up, didn't appear to be sorry. I'll give Dylan the appropriate punishment and begin my second life. Dylan's was the location I chose for the company's presentation. Anyone from any department may participate, so I applied right away and was allowed to enter the conference room. When it was Dylan's turn, his employer, who had no idea he had joined the firm midway and remarried, stated, Dylan is newly married, so he must be very excited today. Yes, I will do my best for my family. He seemed joyful as he spoke, despite the fact that he should be aware of my presence in the room. I bolstered my determination by playing the audio I received from her. The unexpected audio surprised everyone, but once they realized Dylan had an affair with my sister after marrying me, they started to question Dylan. Dylan, you stated that the cause of your divorce was a difference in priorities between you and your partner, correct? I couldn't help laughing. Oh, is that how he phrased it? I don't comprehend the priorities of someone who would cheat on his wife's sister. I apologize for interjecting personal matters into such an essential and professional presentation. I have decided to quit as of today. I've tolerated much because I adore this firm, but I can no longer continue to work with this individual. As I attempted to leave, the executive intervened to stop me. Hold on, Reagan. You are an invaluable asset to our firm. Dylan should be the one to depart. What? Me? But I was considered. We had high hopes for you in the past, but your recent appearance and lack of focus are troubling. Your once impressive problem-solving abilities appear to have diminished. There isn't much to expect from you right now. It appears that Zoe, who was never adept at housework and did little even when she lived at her parents' house, became a housewife after marrying. She did, however, delegate the majority of the chores to Dylan. Even when Dylan did poorly at work, she was unable to provide guidance in the same way that I could, and the frequency with which Dylan caused problems at work has increased. Dylan's reputation suffered as word went throughout the firm that he had left his ex-wife for his sister. During a board meeting, it was agreed that I would remain with the company while Dylan, who had been considered expendable, would be transferred to a rural outpost. Zoe, who had been enjoying life as a housewife with Dylan's money, immediately dumped Dylan after he was taken off the promotion track and moved on to another man.